All right, what's up, Welcome back to another episode of Greetings from the Garden State, powered by the New Jersey Lottery. I'm Mike Cam. We're here at 902 Brewing Co. in Jersey City with Don Vogt. Don, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So this is pretty cool. Like, we're on the roof. There's not. A, I feel like there's not almost enough rooftop spots in New Jersey. I don't think so. I think we're one of the few breweries that actually have a rooftop, I believe. I think yeah. we're one or two other ones, maybe. Oh, yeah. So. And so, you know, right down here in Jersey City, you can see the New York City skyline, which is pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about 902. Uh, brewery, obviously, how long have you guys been here in this spot? I know you were in Hoboken first, right? We, we, we've been, um, our brand has been out for about nine years now. Um, we were Gypsy Brewing for four to five years. Um, and then in March of 2020, we got our CEO for here. Basically the same week the governor shut everybody down. Mm. So obviously perfect, perfect, time, perfect time, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, distro business was going great. So we said we need our brick and mortar. We took about a year and a half, two years to build this place out. And um, of course, shuts down. <laughs> we had everything of all this generators, revenue going to come in from the tap room. And of course, you know, shut down. But hey, we're still around four years later. Um, so we've been here for four years now. Um, and we're still kicking. Yeah. You know, so what's uh, your role here? Um, I'm technically CFO. Um, I run the tap room, sales. Uh, so a lot of things. So, so basically everything. Yeah, me and my partner split up a lot of the tasks. Yeah. Uh, he does a lot of the websites and production end of it. Um, I handle the other side of the business. Yeah. So. And so when you guys kind of like put this concept together, like what, why, why a brewery? Um, what were you guys? What were you both doing beforehand? He, he's an uh, he's an engineer. Okay. He, he was with the engineer with an army. Um, my background's in accounting, um, so he was doing home brewing and it was tasting good. Won a few competitions. He, um, our black IPA was winning most of those competitions, but we put that out about once or twice a year now. Um, you don't see many of those out there. Yeah. So they were winning competitions, and we said, "Can we really try to make this a business?" And here we are. To almost. 10, 11 years later. Yeah. Two, two years with the state to get everything going, and then nine years in actual business. Yeah. So, like, two, you said 2012 was when? From, 14, from 14. Okay. I mean, we started doing everything in 12, or paperwork. Was oh, I gotcha. 12. It took about two years with the state. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because the state's very fast on doing things. Um, so, 14 um, kind of was a launch. Yeah. Third and that, 14. that's, like, pretty early, I feel like, for Jersey breweries, because we've had you know, a few breweries on in the past. And uh, I feel like 2014, like, I mean, what were you guys, like one of like the first 50 out there? We were one of the first that were out there, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. Yeah. And so, I mean, I imagine like kind of seeing the like trajectory of how kind of the brewery, like New Jersey breweries, like different hurdles and different things that they've had to face. I mean, even now, like the stuff that they just fixed, you know, that's like a big, that's a big one. That's a big one. But back then, then there was, that was like, it was really hard to get a brewery off the ground. It, it was, it was, it wasn't easy. It, um, I think we did it. I like the way we did it compared to, it, um, if we opened a brick and mortar first, I don't know how, if we would still be around. Right? Yeah. Um, having the distro business, doing the gypsy brewing, was able to get our brand out there, get the people to know who we were. Uh, we knew we were doing something well. The beer was good, um, so we said, "Yeah, yeah let's, build, let's, let's build something." Yeah. You know, at this time, it was, that's what we said. Let's build. Yeah. And so, who was like the first person to be like, "We should open up a brewery"? Because I mean, you could do like homebrew contests and different things like that. But oh, as, you, my, as you now know, definitely part of COVID. Yeah. yeah definitely and so, like, how did he convince you to go along with that? <laughs> it, was, it was easy. It was you know, the beer was good. You know, that's, yeah. that's the hardest thing is you know, we have a good product. It's it's easy. It makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. yeah. I still got obviously all those hurdles out there, getting into people's hands and stuff like that. But the point of um, making good beer and then moving to the real obviously a real decision was make building this place out. Yeah. Um, six years ago, building this out, been here four, two years before. That was the real decision maker is building this. The gypsy brewing was easy. You're not. Um, Financially, uh, as invested in it. Sure. But now you gotta be able to buy the tanks, you gotta buy the brew equipment, you gotta buy, you know, build out a tap room, you gotta build out, that's where the cost of money comes in. That was the harder thing. We had two partners at that um, prior to building this out. It was a little too much for them to, um, time wise, and um, to, to, do, to do that. Um, so they kind of walked away at that point. Yeah. So Kobe and I have been here. Where did the, the gypsy brewing come from? Like the name? 
Uh, you can go to different different breweries and do, and do our beers. Okay, so, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah gypsy, so, Trap Brewing, Gypsy, gypsy Brewing. Yeah, yeah, right. And then, uh, so when you open up this place is when you kind of almost like rebranded, I guess, into 902? Is that how No, that? we've always, had, always been oh, 902. Always, always been 902. 902. I'm sorry. Yeah, 902 yeah, yeah. comes from 902 Washington Street. That's where gotcha. home brewing started. That's where the, um, the whole concept, I understand the whole concept yeah, yeah. came in. Yeah, okay. So, so uh, at what point, so like you're you know, obviously the just doing distro basically at that point. Only and, doing distro. Yeah, and then the idea comes like let's have a tap room, you yeah. know, like, a, like an actual physical place where people can come taste the stuff, you know, and like enjoy it, buy stuff directly from us essentially. Correct. Um, was there like a, a critical mass kind of that you reached at, the, at that we, point? We, um, it was going well. It was selling well. Um, we looked at the numbers. Made sense at the time. Um, man, it still makes sense now, obviously. Yeah. Um, if the pandemic didn't hit, but it would be a lot, <laughs> would be yeah. a lot better. But, uh, but yeah. uh, a lot of things um, would be a lot better. Exactly. Um, so yeah. So we, you know, the numbers were looking right. Um, we were actually contract brewing at two different locations. Okay. So we were doing it at a bunch of different places, and we thought it'd be easier just to bring it in all together, have more controls in place with ourselves doing it. Um, and then again, the tap room. Um, yeah. Open up that tap room again. <laughs> if the pandemic didn't have, we would have opened the tap room, and everything would have been per- absolutely perfect, rolling right into the um, open place up. Distro was going great, and um, tap room was a thing. Yeah. So just time wasn't, wasn't there for us. Right yeah. And so... Uh, when you're, you have the idea for the tap room, obviously, like, and I didn't realize this. I was interviewing another very kind of like early, I was interviewing Twin Elephant Brewing okay. Company. This is like last year about, and he told me, and I didn't realize this, but like a tap room is kind of like, if you want to break down like the revenue streams, the tap room's kind of where it's at, for at least for them, you know? 100%. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, the markups are there. Sure. We charge our beer same thing as our distro clients do. We, we you know, we don't want to, yeah. Our neighbors O'Leary's, Harry's daughter, they, they right. borrow a beer from us, so we yeah. can't undercut them either. Sure, exactly. so, you know, you know, yeah. even though it costs us the same amount to make selling to them and to us, but we try to, you know, we're all community here, so we try to sell our prices to yeah. the national community. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, as you're going through this and you know, you, you find this space, like what was the space prior to you it guys taking burnt it? out um Upholstery's place. It's burnt out. It was better. It was burnt out. Had no. Had a. I think it had a half a roof on it. Okay. First, I think the first time I walked in the building, I walked in. I slipped on uh, pigeon shit, and <laughs> fell. I, I said, "You know what? We're taking this fucking space." Stupid <laughs> <laughs> my leg. curse. I apologize. That's okay. Um, it's a show I, about I, New Jersey. I, like, I, I cur- you give my, this is, if yeah. I don't curse, it's not me. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So I slipped on pigeon shit, and um, we said we're gonna take it. It was, yeah. you know, it was good location. We should. Um, was hopefully development starts soon. We, if we figured. At this point, there would be developments around us. Yeah. Uh, so these empty lots. It looks like uh, they're ready to go for something. They're, they're ready. Yeah. To, they are ready to go. <laughs> Again, pandemic slowed a lot of things yeah, yeah. down. Um, so we might be going to movie studio down a block that comes over here a lot. So at least studios. Uh, they, they're talking about expanding their footprint as well. Yeah. Um, so you know, new buildings coming up. So it's just it's a growing area, and that's what we saw. Downtown Jersey City is great. We love going downtown, but to build a facility 7,000 square feet, 6,800 square feet, yeah. downtown, the course wasn't, wouldn't have been there, um, you know. For I feel like even like this kind of space too, like if you do at some point want an opportunity to kind of expand a little bit, like exactly. you do have that. We do have And if you're downtown, you exactly. can't. Can you, no. Yeah. I would imagine like rent's probably a little bit better here uh, than it is. Uh, probably a lot better. <laughs> a lot better. Um, and so when you guys are kind of like putting together almost like the concept of that build out, mm-hmm. Who was kind of like driving that? And like, what was kind of the vision for like what you wanted? A place where people can come in, um, feel comfortable. You know, like the rooftop obviously comes into play too, which yeah, is so dope. This, this was part yeah. of our original design. Yeah. Um, was the rooftop having people up on here, having beers up here, seeing the view of the city. Obviously, you got, we got beautiful Statue of Liberty straight ahead of us. Yeah. Uh, as well. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You can see it better in the winter. Uh, yeah. The trees just start blooming. It's not that. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the trees are a real buzzkill, <laughs> <laughs> especially in the city. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so what's your call? The, the view, the, the atmosphere, the Jersey City's community is unbelievable. Um, the food industry here, the you know, people like to try different things. We have artists here all the time. We do an art expo kind of once a quarter now. We yeah. do it once a month during the summer, last summer. We might bring that back. But bands are great here. So all those different things are helping us. Yeah. So you've mentioned this a couple times, and like we're all about community-driven stuff because that's literally what the show. Like this is episode 128. 
And so, and it's also coming out my sister's birthday, so we'll shout out my sister. So shout out, happy birthday, Nicole. Happy birthday, um, Nicole. But, uh, so the community thing, I think, is a really interesting piece because one of the things that I've noticed from the branding and what you guys do here and then kind of going around to different spots in Jersey City, like you always see 902. That's like a, that's one thing that you always see, especially around the Jersey City area. So talk to me about like kind of the importance of the community supporting what you guys do beyond just like buying your beer, but then on the kind of the flip side too, like, you know, you mentioned a couple of things already with like artists and different things. Like what, what was kind of like the early, you know? Uh, yeah, so I'm originally from Jersey City. I okay. born in Jersey City. Um, so you're like a diehard Jersey so, City so guy. So Jersey City, you know, was where it is that, you know, they just were in, were in the national championship again yeah. for us. Um, it's a Jersey City thing. So, but um, when we were building this out, Pulled right next to Kevin from O'Leary's. Harry's daughter, uh, Alistair and Rhea, came down and spoke to the community about us and dealing with us. So we all work together this, in this city. Uh, we do night market, uh, midnight market. They do food festivals down there. Um, we we'll work with them well. We're involved in the Hurley um, Hurley Family Foundation. Yeah. We, we, we do a beer for Coach Hurley, uh, Hall of Fame basketball coach. Um, and, you know, we just try to get involved as much in the community as possible here. Um, great art community here. Great music scene here. Um, so we have local artists um, and bands that play here at least once a week. Um, and they, they support us. And just, you know, it's great. It's a great, very, for a big, this is probably, in my opinion, the biggest city in the state. It's where I know census might say different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I say Newark is, but Jersey City is the biggest. Um, it's a small community. It's a very, very small community, Jersey City's community, and I think it's it's a um, the, people want to see each other succeed in this in this city. They, you know, you, I don't see anybody try to harm another business in this, in this area. Yeah. You know? um, so I, I, I love it. It's just it's Jersey City. Yeah. yeah. Can, Jersey City. How, how much more can you say to yeah, Jersey yeah. City? That, that's what it's all about. Yeah. You know? It's gonna be pretty cool for you too to be like a Jersey City guy kind of watch this like incredible renaissance evolution of Jersey City over the last however many years oh, yeah. and then kind of be a part of that too right it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great feeling um, it feels great it's place I left here for a couple of years um, my younger years and I, I told my parents when I can I'm moving back and they're like okay you're gonna do that <laughs> yeah, right. left college and within as soon as I left college, I was back in, back in Jersey City. Yeah, where did you go to college? West Virginia. Okay, so that's like a whoa. That's like a totally different, <laughs> totally different vibe. It, like it's shock to the system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and it's and I um, so it, you know Jersey City is Jersey City. It's just it brings you know you go anywhere. I go anywhere in this country, I meet somebody from Jersey City. It's, yeah. You go to Florida, meet somebody, see somebody, somebody from Jersey City, North Carolina, Texas. You just run for somebody that either family was from here or lived here at some point in their time. Yeah. So there's nothing better than Jersey City. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now I have to ask, outside yeah. of here, like, what are your favorite spots in Jersey City? Because, I mean, that's, like, what um, we do. I would say, look, going to Larry's, sure. Harry's doing Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got to shout them out for sure. Um, what you call it? Um... I like just tease downtown. They don't, they don't carry our beer, so they, they, I still like them, though. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> West Tees, the food is always delicious down there. Um, Green Hook, food's great down there. Um, who else would I like going to? Um, Boots and Bones, great, great barbecue That's food. That's brand new, right? Brand new. Uh, Newark, uh, is that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kenny, his brother, did a great job down there. Um, the food is unbelievable. Um, we're trying to throw else now. Sorry, you don't leave some out. I, I, I don't leave, always leave somebody out. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Lakos, great Italian food, one of the, the oldest Italian places in Jersey City. Yeah. Um, it's another great spot to go to. We lost a lot of our old places, Costante, a lot of the old old school Puccini's, old school Italian food places. Um, we lost a lot of those over the last couple of years, but um, yeah, that was, that was yeah. my go to spots. Yeah, yeah. The Mayo Performing Arts Center is the heart of arts and entertainment in Morristown, New Jersey. MPAC presents over 200 events annually and is home to an innovative children's arts education program. To see MPAC's upcoming schedule of world-class concerts, stand-up comedy, family shows, and more, head to mayoarts.org or just click the link in our show notes. Hey, folks. I want to tell you about the crew over at Make Cool Shit. These are the magicians who recently gave our podcast a jaw-dropping makeover. You know how we roll here at Greetings with the Garden State podcast, right? We're all about that Garden State attitude. Well, Make Cool Shit shares that same vibe, and they've got something absolutely epic to offer. 
It's called the Unlimited Cool Shit Design Subscription. It's a game changer, my friends. Imagine this. Unlimited creativity, one flat monthly fee, and none of that boring stuff. It's like having your very own army of design superheroes on speed dial. Whether you're a fresh race startup or a seasoned business looking to shake things up, the team at Make Cool Shit has got your back. It's all about making your brand sizzle no matter where you are in your journey. So if you're ready to turn your ideas into mind-blowing realities, then it's time to connect with Make Cool Shit. To check them out on Instagram at at WeMakeCoolShit or visit their website, WeMakeCoolShit.co. Remember, that's co, not com. We also have to shout out White Eagle Hall because that's like the big reason why we're White here. Hall, yes. You know, um, because which Coach Hurley used to play. Exactly. And practices that, used to see, be there. <laughs> right. That's, that's what we do here. So for the segue portion of this episode, um, yeah, you have the. You said you have the Coach Hurley beer, which is called Hurley Hoops. Hurley Hoops and Hops. And Hops. Um, I'm drinking uh, Chilltown Crusher. Okay. I just had a Heaven Hell or Hoboken. Correct. You got... And the Mexican Lager. Mexican Lager. All right, that one doesn't count, but uh, it counts. I think Path's going to be there. Path. Path. Yeah, yeah. Path is going to be... Um, but what I think is interesting and, like, what I love about just like local breweries is like their ability to kind of tie in their community into their branding. And so was that a thing that like out of the gate, you're just like, oh, we're just going to like keep kind of tying these together because 100%. obviously they all have certain 100%. things. Uh, my father worked for Path. Um, so obviously Path, that's one of the names of Path came around. Yeah. Um, Hurley Hoops and Hops, obviously named it the coach. Um, Pacific Highway, block we're on. Uh, everything. We try to tie it to the community as much as possible. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely plays a role. We have different ones out there that don't. Um, you're killing me, Smalls. I mean, that's just <laughs> yeah. you know, S- springtime baseball. Yeah. What's, what's better? Um, yeah, we try, we try to make the names kind of fit the community and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, it's funny because like, so I had, I don't know if you know, Choose New Jersey. They're like an organization that kind of is like the marketing arm of the state. And I had their CEO on and they work directly with like the governor's office and all that kind of stuff. And he lives in Hoboken. Uh, and he was talking about the Heaven, Hell or Hoboken yep. beer. And uh, like that kind of connection to, was that World War Two, right? Uh, World War World War One. One. Yeah. So the Persian told the troops I'll either see you in heaven, hell, or back in Hobo. Yeah. So we do a lot with the American Legion in Hoboken as well. Uh, they're building eighteen apartments for veterans out there. So every year awesome. we actually do we we're actually gonna do two things this year. But um, the last couple of years we've done a benefit to raise money. Last year the Bayonne um, American Legion actually donated a hundred thousand to the Hoboken one. Um, we raised another thirty or forty thousand just in the event that day to build those apartments for, those, for the troops that came back, the veterans that came back, that fell in bad, bad times and, and need a place to stay. What's great about their facility is that they, um, it's not when you get back on your feet, they, a lot of these places kick you out at that point. Yeah. You can stay there the rest of your life, basically, if you need to. Yeah. Um, you know, didn't want to turn it over, but if you have to stay there the rest of your life, you want to stay there the rest of your life, you can. Um, so, it's one of the other groups we work with a lot in, in the thing. Um, but yeah, it's they haven't had a whole book and that's and they have a big in, in their they have a bar in the, in the American Legion of, up there and there's a big sign that says heaven yeah it was just so, I mean yeah. just the idea of that kind of like exactly. freaks me out just to be, to be like told that as I'm going to war um, let's talk about like the the logo too because I think that's interesting also like where does the was that a hammer and a uh, hammer and nail the, the, hammer and nail the railroads yeah you know I was path you know um, Hudson County uh I think the most railroads in the country at one point, you know, all well, the docks coming out uh, into the Hudson River. So all the railroad tracks, and that's kind of where it felt came behind. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, so uh, when you're kind of like, you, you have the distro business, then you have the tap room now, like, do you kind of, like, look down the road at all, or are you just kind of taking it, like, day by day, sort of? Um, well, we're looking down the road. We're looking yeah. to expand into different states right now. Um, you know, tap room. Uh, maybe, maybe do another facility potentially at some point um, in Western Jersey or, or Northern Jersey, um, or maybe another state, depending um, on laws and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, some of some of the states have a little better. <laughs> I know it's about, <laughs> it about Garden State. No, so, that's totally fine. You know, yeah. But yeah, you know, we um, we talk, which we we did talk about putting maybe like a farm brew house to do or larger beers, the Chill Towns of Paths or having all whole booms or core or core three yeah. to expand those those lines a, a little bit. Yeah. So Okay, cool. So uh, so there are some plans. And then I also think it's interesting too, like the three 
cores, and then like how often you guys kind of like rotate and the uh, rest. We, uh, we have t- two to three different beers come out a month. Okay. Uh, we can. It's pretty. It's a that's a good amount. Yeah, we can every th- about every three weeks right now. Um, so we normally have one or two cores on that, or. Uh, one or two core beers and two um, rotating beers. Uh, some of them are repeat, some of them are not. Yeah. You know? So the most of our beers do do at least once a year, maybe twice a year, depending on you know. Yeah. On, on the beer. Is it crazy to think too, like you know? So this whole concept kind of gets started in 2012, I think we said. Yep. And then it's 12 years later, and we've seen a lot of things happen since then. The business has kind of grown mm-hmm. quite a bit. Is it like crazy to think back to being like hit your buddy coming to you and be like, hey? Let's start a brewery. Yeah, yeah. And now you actually have one, and yep. it's dope. Like yep. it's got this cool space. It has the rooftop. You can see the city. Like there's all these things happening. You know, you're in bars that you kind of like, in some sense, grew up going to. There's a handful yeah. of them. Isn't yep. that isn't that crazy <laughs> to like kind of like wrap it your head around? It's crazy when people go, oh, I want to introduce you to the owner. He owns a beer. And people are like, you own a beer company? So that's that's amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you make you make this yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I go, yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is work right now. We're working. We're yeah, doing beers. Yeah, exactly. Work, you know? Yeah. Um, that's a great part. You know. I've uh, you know I'm an accountant um, in my background. I've done real estate. I've done property management. Um, but nothing's more fun than this. You get to have a beer and you can call it work. You yeah. Know? And and then again, there's a lot of people don't realize how much work is behind the scenes that go on at breweries. Yeah. The concepts of making the, the labels, the merchandise, all those different things. People don't grab grab the concept. But at the end of the day, you can sit down and. And taste what you what you made. Yeah, you know. And so it's it's, it's, a, it's a great experience. Yeah. What's the, what's the process like for you guys to have those new beers come out? Like who is kind of the driving? Is uh, it? We, we we do a, a monthly meeting. Okay. We sit down with our team. Uh, we try to plan out about three to six months in advance, um, and we. We try to see the trends. Um, obviously, right now, a lot more lagers are going. Yeah. Obviously, we talked about two years ago, three years ago, you saw the more of the IPAs. Uh, even when we, when we first started, no one was really doing lagers at that time, um, 10 years ago. Yeah. And now, I, our best sellers are all lagers, and this, they just kill it. And we, we, we're doing like six or seven different lagers a year now, besides our core, um, besides Chilltown. So, um, seeing the trend and changing um, of everything, it, is the biggest thing right now. Yeah. And I, I guess, it, like you said, I mean, it kind of really almost like relies on the community that's coming and buying the stuff. Like, what are they buying? Yeah. You know? And then kind of almost like tweaking it, I guess, in certain cases, or do you like yeah. bring back like fan favorites at any we point? We do. Like, um, our Juicy City, we, we do about well, that's, two. That's a good name. We do two, three <laughs> times a year. It's, it's definitely juicy. juicy. It's, it's, our hazy, yeah. it's, our, it's our core hazy IPA. Um, yeah, so we do that about three to four times a year. Um, we said there's a fan favorite. Um, we only have we have six fermenters right now, uh, one bright. So it's kind of hard to have four core beers going at, at one yeah. time. So that's one that's on the outlier. That that happens multiple times a year. But like our Kill Me Smalls, we do every year from baseball season comes out. Um, or we do a beer called uh, to tailgate to beer to tailgate to beer to fish to. You know we have a couple of little concepts like that that come out annually. Um, those are great. Yeah. You know for us. Yeah. And so I also think it's interesting too because you you have talked about it a little bit, but um, on the event side, like you had the cigar event recently that I really wanted to come to. Actually, like one of the guys that's playing Jersey Fest was yeah. here for the. This guy Reese, he's like oh, six yep, foot yep, seven, yep, yep, long yep, hair. Yep, yep. Yeah, been Reese for a while. He actually yeah. works at a cigar shop as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Um, so, like, talk to me about that part of it too, because I think like that's especially uh, now that so that stuff has changed. I know you missed it, but we do it again on April nineteenth. Oh, so. Thank God. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. When's April nineteenth? April nineteenth is a Thursday. Okay, good. All right, it's a Thursday night. I'll be here. So. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think like like that stuff too. I think is like a great way to kind of April eighteenth. April eighteenth. It's a Thursday night. Even better because I have something <laughs> on the nineteenth. Um, like that stuff too is like a great way to kind of change it up, do different things, and especially now with kind of the the way that the events and all that is like the restrictions on that has kind of changed. It does allow you to kind of do different things and explore different possibilities. So like, what are some things that you've done that you're like really proud of, and then what are some things that you you want to try to do? Yeah, the score night was a great night. We uh, we had a lot of people here. We actually teamed up with the local cigar, Jersey City cigar guys. Yeah. For that as well, um, we've been doing. We did actually three three labels for a local artist, um, Mozart, um, Forsaken, 
and Clarence Rich. We did actually a label for them. They did actually live um, art on the rooftop here. Cool. Uh, actually, for the sake of the end, because it was pouring rain, um, pouring rain that night, but. Uh, Mozart did actually a mural up here. Yeah. His, um, you see the water tower, one of the water towers back here has the Statue of Liberty on. Yeah, straight ahead. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's his, that's his, that's his th art. Oh, um, cool. So those were fun ones. Um, we've been doing DJs every Friday night. We do a DJ here. Um, most breweries don't have DJs, and we we got a lot of good feedback from that. They're saying, um, they don't, they don't see that. They don't, they don't see that. We do, obviously, we have Wednesday nights, we do Acoustic Wednesdays. Um, on a week, uh, Saturday nights, we try to get another band here as well. So we're trying to get all that going. And, yeah. 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 It's got to be tough, too, because it's like, like you want to, like, line those things up the right way and, you know, you also <laughs> want to make sure that, that people that are coming, yeah. you know, because breweries only got this interesting thing now because it's become almost like a family vibe to a degree in some cases. So our set, that's, that was the weirdest thing to me. Yeah. Um, we opened up and people started coming and people brought their uh, play pens for the kids. And I'm like, I'm looking at the counter, I'm like, <laughs> I call my woman on the stairs, I'm like, is that a play pen in, 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 in the tap room? Yeah. Yeah, this family brought their kids, they cut their hair all the time, they brought a play pen for the kids so they could, uh, I'm like, okay, that's that, that, was, that was the weirdest concept. It, yeah. Our Saturdays and Sundays, um, Afternoons, it's all families. It's, yeah, it's really. It's, it's, it's I really think that's great. pretty it's, consistent it's, across yeah. most breweries. I yeah. won't say all, because I know a couple that are not that way. Yeah. But they yeah, with their, they come with their strollers. They walk down a block. They come, yeah. you know, sit up there, you know, <laughs> play pens in, in a tap room. I'm like, okay, <laughs> yes, you know. So I think obviously with the law changes, now being able to have all the drinks for the kids there. One sure, thing yeah. You didn't have before. Yeah. Is a drink for the kids, and these kids now we have Capri Sun down there and um, different little iced teas and stuff like that that we can actually sell them and too that helps. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was that was the strangest thing to me was the all the kids that actually come to a brewery. I have a yeah. three year old and four year old, and I never think about bringing them to a brewery. But yeah, since having here, I, I had to rethink it. I guess. <laughs> yeah, we go out to breweries like a decent amount. Me and my girlfriend, and we have no kids, but like if we go out in an afternoon and there's kids, we're like, oh yeah. Brewery, so we we got to sometimes <laughs> deal with kids, which is fine. Bring yeah. your bring your kids. Bring your kids. Drink up. as long as you're drinking. Yeah, that's that's no, pretty no much. No driving, just walk the stroller. Home. Exactly, walk, walk the stroller walk home. The stroller let home. the kid drive home. <laughs> honestly, um, awesome. So this has been really cool. I really appreciate you jumping on. No problem. Real quick, easy type of thing. Yep. Um, what are some things that like if people don't know about 902 that you like want them to know about your brand, your brewery? Uh, like when they do come out, like. What should they be looking for? What should they do? Again, um, just come out to the brewery. Um, yeah. One of the things that I was opening this place up in March of 2020, people s still saying, "Oh, we didn't realize you had an actual place right at this point." Yeah. So that's our biggest hurdle we've been uh, thing. Everybody sees like he's, he did. He says he saw our tap lines downtown. They go, "Oh, we didn't realize you actually had a brewery in Jersey City." Yeah. So that's that's our been our hardest thing is trying to get people into the tap room. Learn the tap room, and that's probably our, our biggest goal for this year is to get people to know that we have a physical location. Um, go out to all those restaurants that carry our beer, but come come in the tap room, come see cigar night, come to see some of the music shows, come see the artists that come out here. Um, that's our our biggest thing this year. Yeah, and I do love that you guys like you do the events and you like the, you said the artists and the bands and different things that you have come out are like. The Jersey City, yep. you know, and that like, that's what you guys are all about, which is one of the things about your brand and what you guys do, I think is really cool. And like the more I've learned about it, the more I've come to kind of like respect that because that's what we do, but just across the state, you guys are doing it like right here in this community. So if people want to learn more, where should they be going to learn more? Good. Um 902brewing.com. I wrote it down. Got, sure. got it yeah. <laughs> I haven't been there in a while, but yeah, 902brewing.com. Yeah. Obviously, go follow us on Instagram yep. at 902brewing. Uh, it's to Facebook. We have oral events on Facebook as well. Yep. Um, and this episode is coming out before Jersey Fest, so oh, yeah, more important. Jersey come out to Jersey Fest. Fest. Yeah. Well, we're here. Well, we're here tonight. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, Don, I really appreciate you. Thank you. Jumping okay. on the show with us. Thank you, uh, so we'll put 902brewing.com in the show notes. Uh, come down. What's the address here? 101 Pacific Avenue, Jersey City. Yeah. Jersey. So a little bit outside downtown Jersey City, but still part of Jersey City, a major part of Jersey City for sure. Uh, so we'll put 902 Brewing. We'll put the address in the show notes so you guys can come check it out. Go to the website. 
see you at Jersey Fest. Get a probably a chill town, I think, is on tap, like we said. Chill town path. Yeah, path. Well, so, yeah. So uh, we'll put those in there along with greetingsforthegardenstate.com, which is the website for the show, so you can check out all of our other episodes. Um, this has been the Greetings for the Garden State podcast, powered by the New Jersey Lottery. I'm Mike Ham. He was Don Vote. We were here at 902 Brewing Company Co. 902 Brewing Co. in Jersey City, New Jersey. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time.